Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Today, I want to talk about the backlight technology in a lot of these uh, watches and clocks that I have. There's been some discussion in the, the comments section on some of my videos lately, and people seem to be very interested in in this backlight technology, what works and uh, what, what works best, what, what's your preference, and how are things maybe changing in the world of backlight technology. So let me start out by featuring, here's uh, one of the oldest digital watches uh, in, in my house, and <laughs> it has a backlight, and let me show you what this one looks like. If you look at it, um, there's it obviously a very bright, it looks like a tiny incandescent uh, light bulb, just in the side, you know, shining in from the edge of the LCD screen. And that's how it works to give you, you know, your, your backlight. As you can see, it's not very good, you know, but, but uh, back in the early 80s, it was, it was okay. It was the best we had. So that's what we put up with. A similar watch uh, here from Casio that I bought in 1985. Uh, same thing. It's got a little, looks like an incandescent light uh, shining in from the edge. And again, if you you look at it just right, you can see it. Uh, obviously, looking at this through a camera versus what it would look like to your own eyes, it's going to be a little bit different, but you get the basic idea of what these backlights used to look like way back then. And this brings me around to this watch that I bought in the early 1990s. And one of the things that really attracted me to this watch was the electroluminescence feature on it, a different kind of backlight. So uh, in this one, it gives you a nice, even glow over the entire screen, and I really like that. I also like that it kind of blinks sometimes, uh, you know, when you can set it to blink when the hourly chime goes off or when the alarm goes off. So um, I like that it just had this very special light, something I hadn't had before. Now, this brings me around to the term electroluminescence. What does this even mean? Well, basically, when you're looking at these uh, LCD screens here, you've got several layers. And uh, one of, I guess you could say one of the layers is the electroluminescence layer. Uh, it, it's basically this part of the LCD module that when you run a charge through it just the right way, an electrical circuit, it glows and it glows kind of that blue-green color and it glows very, uh, a nice uniform glow across the entire uh, LCD panel. So that, that made it really nice. And so this is something that started uh, coming up in the you know, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, my, my understanding is that Timex sort of did a trademark on what they call in the glow. So it's the same thing. It's the electroluminescence, but they call it in the glow because, you know, just a play on words, indigo being a color and glow. So, um, you know, if you, if you see that on your Timex devices, as far as I know, it's the same thing as this electroluminescence that you'll see on some of these other um, clocks and watches that I'm showing you here. Now, the thing about the electroluminescence layer is that it can um, lose its brightness over time. So after your watch or your clock is a few years old, you know, you don't necessarily see it as bright as it used to be, kind of a half-life, you know. So a few, few years later, it'll be even more dim than that. And uh, some people have reported with their Timex watches or even some Casio watches that that electroluminescence function maybe has failed completely. So, um, you know, they, don't, they can only use their watch in when it's in good lighting conditions and not have a backlight of any sort uh, to see it when it's dark. So th that maybe is the reason why uh, Casio seems to be phasing out the electroluminescence in favor of, with some of their newer watches, uh, just an LED. So in a lot of ways, uh, putting an LED in these watches is a throwback to these watches from the 1980s, right? Where you have some sort of LED light instead of being a small incandescent light like maybe it would be with these older watches. It would be a small uh, LED coming from the edge to light up the characters here on the screen. So you can see, if you look closely at it, you can see there is sort of a little bright spot, a little hot spot on, on one edge or another that is uh, indicating that that's where the LED actually is. So it's different from electroluminescence, and um, there are some advantages to using an LED instead of electroluminescence. Obviously, over time, if we think the LED will be more reliable. It won't have that, uh, that tendency to dim after years of use or fail completely as much as electroluminescence would. Uh, but also maybe some people don't like having a little hot spot or a little bright spot on the side there. Another advantage of using an LED 
instead of the electroluminescence is that the LED actually doesn't use as much electricity, uh, as much power, as electroluminescence. The electroluminescence layer actually requires uh, a higher voltage, so when you have electroluminescence, then what you really need to do there is create some sort of circuitry in there that will raise the voltage in order to light up that panel correctly. And so, you know, that's going to be a, a drain on a battery or just, you know, a power concern there. And also, when it comes to devices like this bedside alarm clock that you see here, this has an electroluminescence layer in it. Uh, when you push the button to activate electroluminescence, you can actually hear, if, you, if it's very quiet at night and if you have good hearing, you can hear high frequencies, then you can hear a high frequency noise when that uh, electroluminescence layer is lit up. And that's actually the noise of the circuitry that is raising the voltage, making that sound. You ever have like, a, like an electronic flash for a camera and as, as it's charging up, getting ready to flash, you can kind of hear a high-pitched whine winding up as it's charging up a capacitor or something. So you can actually, I don't know if I can even uh, adequately record the sound and let you hear what that sounds like. I'll try, but uh, again, you, you can hear <laughs> that noise and that's, that's the circuitry pumping up the voltage in order to activate that layer. Now here are some Oregon Scientific uh, bedside alarm clocks that I, I really like. They all do the same thing, but of course, you know, they're different colors. So I had to collect more than one version of this. And these are a little bit older. These are uh, at least 15 years old, probably closer to 20 years old each. And what I've discovered on these is that the uh, electroluminescent layer on these has failed on two out of three. Uh, one of them seems to work okay. But uh, the other two, one of them just barely gives a little bit of glow on uh, one edge and another one even less so. So it, you may find with uh, alarm clocks like these, you'd have a dark spot in the middle or, you know, like it is with this one where it's even more obscured. That can happen uh, because the electroluminescent layer, you know, just they, they didn't last as long as, as we hoped they would. Now here's one. Uh, this one still works okay. It has that electroluminescent layer. But what I'm seeing is even with uh, some of the newer Oregon Scientific uh, clocks that have come out in the last uh, few years, looks like they've eliminated the electroluminescent technology and even Oregon Scientific is using some sort of LED technology to make these things work. So if I look at this one in the dark and I, and I you know, turn on the its backlight, I can see that there's kind of a hot spot um, uh, coming from the edge. And so that would indicate again that this one is also no longer using uh, you know, the electroluminescent technology. And here's one I picked up, again, just a little bedroom alarm clock that has uh, atomic time uh, reception built into it. And again, if you look at this one in, in the dark and you turn on the, uh, you know, the backlight, it looks like there's a hot spot or two coming from the edge indicating that, yeah, electroluminescent is uh, on the way out with, <laughs> with most manufacturers. And so it makes sense that when Casio is coming up with some of their newer technology, some of their newer modules, they are also kind of phasing out the electroluminescence technology. So here, why don't I run through some of my Casios and show you what they look like with the backlights. These use electroluminescence. So this one here, if I light that up in the dark, um, so that's what it looks like. It looks really good for now. And I should mention that none of my Casio watches has had a, a failure of the electroluminescent screen uh, so far. This is my oldest one right here again. So we're looking at close to 30 years of use and this one has not failed yet. So, uh, you know, good luck so far uh, on these. But again, they'll be susceptible to all the problems you might have with electroluminescence. So anyway, this one here, again, using the electroluminescence. So that's the way its backlight looks when you light that up at night. Here are a couple of the more affordable wave scepter watches. This one, uh, this is what the backlight looks like there, electroluminescent. This one here, again, similar, electroluminescent backlight there. These two watches, very similar to each other. This one on the left, I'll show you what it looks like with its backlight activated. And this one over here, show you what that one looks like with its backlight activated. Here's one that people like to refer to as the G-Shock King, and this is what it looks like with its backlight activated. And uh, here's a G-Shock with a negative display or a reverse LCD. And uh, this is what it looks like when you activate the backlight on this guy. 
But I'm starting to see more LEDs in use with some of my more recent uh, Casio watches. So these two here, you know, they're, they're very inexpensive, affordable watches, and they happen to use LEDs for the backlight. And you can tell just by looking at them, you can see kind of a, a couple of, uh, you know, hot spots coming from the edge on this one. And uh, this one over here, you can see it looks like just one LED uh, coming from the edge on this one. We get into the analog watches here. And uh, these watches, I, I really like these, but the only thing that I find lacking is the backlight on these guys. So what they have is, uh, I'll just show you on this one here. There's a backlight that all it is is a little light coming from about the six o'clock position that shines up onto the face of the watch. It really does nothing to uh, light up the LCD screen. So uh, you can sort of see the analog hands here, but it's not a great backlight. It looks a little better with this one with the white screen, <laughs> the white uh, watch face. So it tends to light up that one a little bit better. And some people have suggested that if you hold the tip of your finger here, uh, right above wh where the light is coming from, that that might actually enhance the look and help you see a little bit better. But again, I, I don't really think these have great backlights. Uh, and I, I just don't depend on the backlight when I'm using these watches. Now, this is a larger watch that otherwise has the same functions and features of this one here. Does all the same things, but just does it larger. But one thing that is different about this watch is that the backlight has changed. So they still have a light that shines up from the bottom, but they've also incorporated backlights and they look like LEDs in the LCD portions of the face of this watch. So much brighter, much easier to see, including, you know, not just the analog face, but the LCD screens that you can see when you're using this watch here. So this may be the future uh, for, for Casio. I don't know, I, I really like the way they've incorporated these lights into it. Here are a couple of Wave Scepter watches. The one on the left is more available in the US market and the one on the right, I had to go to the Japanese market to find that one. But uh, as you can see, it's the same thing where they just have a light coming up from the six o'clock position that really doesn't do anything to light up the LCD portion of the screen. And again, if you look at how it works on the, the one with the white face, seems to light up the face better just because you know it's a lighter color there. But again, these are not great backlights. I love the watches. I just wouldn't want to uh, rely on the backlights on these wave scepters that are this style. It's a Gravity Master watch, and I really like this one. This has a Bluetooth connection to keep it synchronized to the right time. And uh, it's just a big, beefy watch that I, I wear it almost every day when I, when I go to work. And it has a really nice uh, light that kind of comes from uh, the edge to light up the face, and also has a good backlight for uh, the little LCD portion of the face. And it looks like this one is done with LEDs as well. Nice and bright, and I really like the way this one works. Here's another nice big bulky uh, G-Shock Range Man, and uh, this one appears to use an uh, LED as well. So you can kind of see a bright spot where the LED is coming from the edge, but I really like the way this one looks. Um, so this is a favorite and a big, big, nice, beefy, rugged watch that I really like. This Protrek has a special kind of light coming from the uh, right, the six o'clock position that does a little bit of lighting up the LCD portion of the face, but uh, it, this is not the greatest backlight, but it's okay. And uh, just the overall watch I really like, so, but that gives you an idea of the backlight there. Here are two of the newer G-Shock squares that, uh, that have Bluetooth that people really like. So uh, these use the LED rather than the electroluminescence. So I'll just give you a brief look at what these look like. Obviously the one that has the negative display and this special red color, that one's gonna be very unique. And then uh, this one here, this more traditional looking uh, LCD uh, that, you know, has a more traditional look with the backlight as well, but you can see they're using LEDs. Now, people have uh, taken a good look at these watches, and if you kind of hold them to the side and, and look down at an angle at them, you can sort of see where uh, there's kind of a polarized film as one of the layers of the LCD panel, and you can sort of see off the edge of that film as you look uh, closely at the edges of, of the, the light when the light is on. So some people have noticed that and they don't like that. Uh, I guess the solution is just you, you want to look at the watch uh, 
you know, straight on. Don't don't hold it at an angle when the light is on, and it won't bother you that way, right? But that does give you a little bit of an indication of how the watch is made. And and there at the very edges of the um, LCD screen, you can see where the you know the polarized material on there ends, and you can see that some light spilling from the very very edge inside the watch case. Now, if I put these two watches uh, side by side and compare them, this one here, the GW5000, this is the older version. There's a newer version of this one that was just introduced here in the middle of the year 2021. The new version of this one uses an LED instead of electroluminescence, but the older version uses electroluminescence. So if I put these two watches side by side, you can see that uh, they, they look a little bit different. So here, here they are in the same frame, camera obviously set to the same settings because these two watches are together in the same shot, right? So you can see a little bit of a difference. This may not be exactly the way they look different to your eye, but uh, you can see one of them is using electroluminescence and the other one is using the LED for its backlight. So there you can see it's the electroluminescence on the right and that's how you can tell the difference kind of, you know, basically the way they're going to look uh, between the two of them. So if you're feeling like electroluminescence is your preference and you want to get this watch, you might want to, uh, you know, get on the ball and get it sooner rather than later. Because if you get the new version, which is the GW5000U, it's going to have LED. And if you like LED, well, good for you. You can, you can basically get the new version whenever you feel like it. No rush there to get the GW5000U watch. And that's really all I wanted to say today about watches. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you know that I rarely complain about anything that Casio does. I, I, I tend to go with the flow. And if they've decided that using LEDs instead of electroluminescence uh, from this point onward, if they decided that's a good idea, I'll say, well, they must know what they're doing because they're Casio after all. Uh, again, better reliability, better uh, usage of power by going with LED. I know some people don't really care for it, but um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't really have a complaint about either kind of a technology. But uh, if, if LED is the way to go uh, from this point, I'll, I'll stick with LED and I'll be happy with it. I think I will. Anyway, that's all for this week. And I really do thank you for all the kind words and interesting comments and some of the, the neat interaction I've had lately with these videos. So... That's all for this week. Uh, there could be something very special uh, in next week's video, or I might have to wait until the week after that. But I really have some, some neat ideas. I'm excited for the next couple of videos coming up. And I hope you will be excited too when you join me for another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.